navigation portion. Follow the virtual bronchoscopic pathway toward the target. You will first be driving both the sheath and the scope, and you will know this because the chain link at the bottom will be shown and it will be blue. Often, if traveling to the bilateral upper lobes, you will need to transition from the sheath navigation to the scope navigation. Once the sheath is wedged, hit R2 to switch to the scope navigation. You can see the angulation of the scope by the semicircular lines on the side. These will increase or decrease as your flexion changes. If maximal flexion is encountered and the airway remains difficult to access, one option is to use a modification of the Seldinger technique to access the correct airway. In this video, going after a target in the right upper lobe, we use a pediatric GI forceps, which are extended through the working channel into the correct airway. Then the scope can be advanced into the correct airway over the forceps. Sometimes airways may be noted which are clogged with mucus or debris. Flushing with saline or air can sometimes be used to clear the debris. Keep in mind that flushing or suction may change the view. After aligning the target, the radial ebus can be inserted to evaluate accuracy of the position. Once satisfied, hit the round button, which is the play or pause button, and the navigation portion is now complete. After approaching to within 30 millimeters of the target, you can toggle between imaging screens to ensure that the scope is oriented in a direction that can access the lesion. Radial EBIS is often used at this time to confirm position. After aligning the target in a satisfactory position, hit the button at the top right, the play pause button, and navigation is now complete. Once the scope is in the correct position, biopsy of the lesion can commence. For any instrument that is used, it is important to understand the length of the biopsy instrument and how that relates to the length of the robotic bronchoscope. Only peripheral access instruments can be inserted all the way through the robotic bronchoscope. Also of note, since different peripheral access instruments have been used and created for different procedures and technologies, you must have a clear understanding of when the biopsy tool is about to extend out of the bronchoscope to safely and accurately biopsy. Current biopsy instruments that can be used with a robotic scope are listed below. Needles include the super dimension aspirating needle, either 19 or 21 gauge, the Medtronic arc point pulmonary needle, either 18 or 21 gauge, and the Olympus Periview flex needle, which is 21 gauge. Forceps that can be used include the super dimension biopsy forceps, the Boston Scientific pediatric GI forceps, and the Monarch forceps. Brushes include the Monarch Cytology brush and the Super Dimension triple needle brush. For any biopsy tool, it is recommended that initial collection uses an on-site confirmation such as rapid on-site cytology. If the lesion is more central, you can consider starting with a needle for biopsy. Options are mentioned above. It is recommended that initial biopsies are used to make slides if rapid on-site cytology is available and subsequent biopsies can be added to build a cell block. Needle biopsy may allow enough puncture of the wall that biopsy can then commence with forceps. Following needle biopsy, forceps biopsies is another effective biopsy technique. While it is not strictly necessary to use a fluoroscopy system for biopsies, it is recommended, particularly if the site was marked with radial ebus. One advantage of forceps biopsies is that they can be used to make both touch prep, which is reviewed by cytology, and frozen section histopathology. Bronchoalveolar lavage can also be accomplished through the Monarch robot. Detach the lure lock suction from the scope and attach a 30 or 60 milliliter lure lock syringe with sterile saline. Flush the saline into the scope and then apply suction while slowly withdrawing the scope. Keep in mind that very little lavage fluid tends to return. To minimize radiographic changes, you should always perform bronchoalveolar lavage last. One final rule for any peripheral bronchoscopy is that you will maximize your chance of success by using as many biopsy instruments as possible. Thus, combining needle biopsy, forceps biopsy, brush, and finally bronchoalveolar lavage may be crucial to maximizing your chances of success.